how she made me cry. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's good to cry sometimes. It's good to laugh. Yes, sir. It's good to grieve. When the need is there, it's good to rejoice. And we do it with one another as a family. Yes, sir. You know? Uh, I think of the scripture in uh, um, I need a tissue in Psalm 116 <laughs> we got people giving up thank you, thank you I guess I have to stand still here huh? <laughs> otherwise I'll go off time Uh, in Psalm, what is that here? 116, right there? I like that. You know, you like this scripture, Don? You know what I'm going to say? I like all of God. I love the Psalm. Yeah, Psalm 116, verse 15. It says, let me uh, get the tears out of my eyes so I can see. I sent a uh, sense of presence. I usually cry. That's what us smokers do. Pastor Sam does the same thing. My brother. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We see it as an end in a way, but because of our hope in Jesus Christ, we know it's not the end. Mm -hmm. But the Lord enjoys when we come home. Yes, he does. We don't, we don't necessarily enjoy it because we miss people and so on, but here it says, precious, how does it say? Precious in, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So, we've had a uh, number of friends I'm going to talk we've had a number of friends who went home to be with the Lord um, head usher at the worship center a wonderful man passed away a few weeks ago from COVID we've had a number of friends and family who have had COVID quite severely and we've seen miracles uh, my brother John was sick in the hospital, really sick. We didn't know if he would make it at one point. And he's the baby in the family. So he's younger, about quite a bit younger than I am. He's like 50, what, 53, something like that, family. This girl has four girls. And uh, people prayed. Yeah. We prayed for the usher at the worship center, but... We went home to be with the Lord. My brother. Huh? My brother. My yeah, your youngest brother had it pretty severely. Uh, your sister's husband, good friends of ours. Uh, we saw a miracle in his life. Uh, we thought he was going to go, and the doctor came in and said, you may as well just go home and die. You know, some of these people are not very um, yeah. encouraging yeah. sometimes. Yeah. But then there's other ones that are very encouraging. So we don't want to fault anybody. But he refused to go on a ventilator. Amen. And uh, maybe there was some repercussions in that person because of that. But anyway, um, you know, there's a lot of different opinions, so we won't get into that. I'm here to preach the word of God, not to preach people's opinions. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that night, uh, we talked to his wife, and she was just, yeah, she just needed help. So we prayed and prayed. A lot of people prayed. The next day, similar to Don, he was in the highest oxygen he could go with. I mean, if anybody's in the medical field, you understand all this. I don't. But before they could, would put him on a ventilator. 
And uh, the next day, it just started dropping the oxygen. We just we got reports hour after hour. And by Monday, that was on a Thursday. By Monday morning, he was home. Still had oxygen, but he was home. So we've seen miracles. <laughs> we've seen people being restored. Uh, for most people, it's a long journey back when it comes to strength and so forth. And we were with Don and Tammy last night, encouraging them to, you know, take your time. Yeah. Listen to your body. Yeah. I was in the hospital in 15. I came home, and that's what they told me. They said, listen on your body. And I suffered when I didn't. <clears throat> so we encourage you to do that as well. There's nothing wrong with resting. No. Yeah. My wife tells me that because I'm working all the time. <laughs> I'm a workaholic, so to speak. But yeah, anyway. The Word of God, before I say, before I get into some of the things that I want to share, I just want to thank you for your regular support for Horizons of Hope. I don't know if you know it, uh, maybe most of the congregation does. Uh, you send us a gift every month that goes into the ministry called Horizons of Hope, which is our outreach in Sierra Leone. COVID has done, uh, uh, well, when COVID hit, they shut down. We had like 16 training centers going. And a lot of them shut down because they had to. The government told them they have to. But in, uh, more recently now, some of them have opened up again and are moving forward. Uh, right now, we're in the teacher's training. Some people over there are asked if we could help them with some teacher's training. So they're doing that, and they're also having classes and graduations and things like that. Uh, I really had to be, I'm, I, I'm just, I just want to be, I'm very honest, all right? Mm -hmm. So. We don't judge each other. But I've had no desire to go back for the last year and a half or so. I don't know why. But you know, if something isn't in there, it's just not in there. But then when something's in there, it's really in there, and you better, then we better lead to it. Um, I'm already teaching, and you don't know it. Um, but recently, I've had a little bit more of a desire to go again. And uh, it's not real difficult to get in. Uh, we have to go through some testing and things like that, which I don't like. So we look to go back again sometime in the beginning of this year. So you keep praying for us. We thank you for your support because God's doing a great work. Also, um, just a, as a way of reporting, I don't know if you know it or not, but I believe on election night, this past election. Again, I don't know where you're at politically. I don't want to know, but I'll just share. All right? <coughs> Uh, I believe there was a real shift yes. in our nation, and we're praying for our nation. Mm -hmm. We have a, uh, we started, back in April, we started a, what we call, some people call it a Holy Spirit service, other people call it a prayer and healing school. Uh, twice a month on a Monday night, a bunch of us get together to pray and so forth, and we've been praying a lot. One of our, our main uh, uh, things that we do is to pray for the nation. We use that scripture in Isaiah or in Ezekiel that says that he looked for someone to stand in the gap of the wall, and, and there was none. And when we started, we said, God's not going to say that about America, because that scripture, that scripture is written and given by Ezekiel after Jerusalem was destroyed. And he's talking about that. He was with the captives in Babylon, and he prophesies, and he says, God said, that he looked for someone to stand in the gap for the city. And it doesn't say in the city in the verse, but that's what it's, he's referring to. But he found no one, and therefore destruction came. So let's make sure that that doesn't happen in America. Mm -hmm. That if America falls, and then God looks back and says, well, I found no one to stand in the gap. He's finding people to stand in the gap. Uh, we have missionary friends from Singapore, uh, the Webbers, and they were with us, and they went with us to one of these meetings, and they've been traveling throughout the, throughout the country because they can't go back to Singapore yet for two years. Uh, and he said there's prayer meetings like that happening all over the nation. Think about it. We're just one little group of what God is doing throughout the nation. So I say all that to say this. In the last election, and we live in one of the most liberal uh, townships in our area, in Lancaster County, Manheim Township. And we were praying, not only for our township, but also for other townships as well, that God would raise up righteous people. Yes. And it's got to start there. Mm -hmm. yep. 
we had many we had many seats in I'm talking about our township now. We had many seats that were open for election in the school board and also in the township commissioners they call them there because it's a large township. And every one of them, every one of the liberals were voted out. You can't tell me that's not a shit. Amen? Every one of them that were voted in stand for life. Isn't that awesome? Because they're, they, they stand for the platform that, that is for life and not the platform that's for death. And it's just amazing. We were amazed. We were amazed. I had a local a committee person just lived a couple doors up from us, and we were, he was talking about these things. So I believe there has been a shift. And then my brother Lloyd is a congressman of Lancaster County, congressman in Washington, D.C. He has been for, I think, maybe three terms already, or he's running for his third term. And uh, he, uh, I, I talked to him and told him what happened in Manhattan Township. Of course, he already knew. He said that happened all over the nation. Wow. Good. At the grassroots level. Yeah, yeah. So we have something to rejoice about. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Absolutely. When it comes to things happening behind the scenes. So many times things happen and we have, we always look at the negative things. We all, they're in the forefront more so than the positive things. But if you really begin to dig deep into some of the things that are happening, we should be encouraged for what's happening. Because God's moving. Yeah. We talk about revival. We talk about a great awakening, which is fine, good. I believe it's happening. But sometimes it happens in different ways than we think. Are you, are you yes. listening to it? Yes. I'm already preaching really good, but you're not responding much. I'm still tired. You're what? I'm still tired, she said. Still tired. Well, that's all right. I'll preach anyway. Um, I believe as we open our hearts this morning... That um, the Spirit of God will minister, yeah. maybe to that tiredness. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think sometimes we are so uptight about stuff. And again, don't misunderstand me. I don't mean anything judgmental or condemnation or any such thing. But I think sometimes we get so uptight about things in the faith that we get tired. And then things happen and we wonder why. And then we start judging ourselves and things like that. I think sometimes God just wants us to sit back, take a deep breath. And that's what I want you to do this morning. Just take a deep breath. And throw out a lot of the things you've been thinking about and let God minister to you today by his spirit. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the sweet presence. Of your Holy Spirit. Just take it in. <coughs> Here, you want to come preach? Well, we'll just let the Spirit do what He wants. He can minister without me saying words. You know that? Yeah. I believe a lot of things happen from time to time that causes us to have a lot of questions. It's not wrong to have questions. All right? Because we don't know everything. If we don't have questions, we stop learning. If we don't have questions, we stop pressing into God. And we need to continue to press into Him. So things happen, we ask why, we, what, we say what if. A number of years ago, I did a funeral for a young man. And it was a lot of, he was, had, came from an Amish family, came to the worship center. And he had, um, uh, uh, his family was still Amish. And his dad wanted to honor him. Uh, his dad was progressive enough that he wanted to honor him and have a, somebody from the worship center do his funeral, even though they did their Amish stuff as well. And uh, they asked me to preach. How, what do you preach? <laughs> you have a young man who was flying, uh, what do you call those things? 
Yeah, it wasn't a helicopter, it was like those little planes, <coughs> what do you call them? Ultralight. Ultralight. Uh, ultralight. He had built his own ultralight and he crashed and it burned and he was killed. And uh, so he, so they wanted, so what do you say? What do you say? I had a room full of people. Uh, the church was much bigger than this. There was probably a couple hundred people there, mostly Amish people. And it was an awesome opportunity, because that's my background. And uh, so, <coughs> stop saying and just so. <laughs> so what do you preach? And the Lord gave me a message, and I'm kind of doing some of the same things today. Not the same points, but... And I started out with, you know, and when a young person dies, there, a lot of times there are questions. Because what is this? Why did this happen? Why did he go flying then? Why did he do the right thing? And all these different things, questions. Did you know that if we dwell on the whys and the what ifs, that it will lead us into depression? Because you don't have answers. Now, maybe God can give you answers at time, as time goes on, but sometimes we just have to lay those things aside and say, Lord, I'm pressing into you. And as we press into him, he begins to give us some answers. But I'm also in the, in the belief, belief, uh, belief that I don't always have to have answers for everything. We think sometimes we have to defend the word of God. We think sometimes we have to defend what we believe in our faith and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But God, God can do that. Mm -hmm. And if he leads us to say things and so forth, that's great. But the important thing is, is that we learn to listen to the Spirit of God and we begin to share the things from the Spirit of God. Come on, that was really good. So you know, there's a man in the Bible that had questions as well. Yes. Gideon, in Judges chapter 6, verse 13, I'm sure he wasn't the only one, but I just happened to think of this scripture this morning. It's where the angel appeared to Gideon, and Gideon was a, uh, a nobody, in a sense. He says, well, I'm just, I'm just from the lowly tribe of Benjamin, was he? Or whichever one he was. And he said, my family is one of the lowest families, and I'm one of the lowest guys in the family. What an image of himself. Yeah. <laughs> he had a really strong self-image, didn't he? Yeah. But it was a negative one. <laughs> and so the Lord appeared to him, the angel of the Lord, which I believe was the Lord. It wasn't just an angel, because he, this angel allowed uh, him to worship uh, allowed Gideon to worship him. He says, and, and he said that he was wanted him to do something and so forth. And this is what he said. He said, oh my Lord, if the Lord is for us, why then has all this happened to us? Oh. Boy, doesn't that hit home? Yeah. We, we have disappointments. I don't, it doesn't matter how you look at it, there are disappointments. Yeah. Amen? I've been disappointed one way in the Lord because I have a daughter that could never have a child. She never had a child. So we try to figure it out. Well, why not? Why this? Why that? Didn't we believe enough? Didn't we do that? Just lay that aside. And let the peace of God come and dwell on the inside of you. Are we hearing what the Spirit is saying? Oh, we teach and preach the word of God. We need to continue to do that. Yeah. But I'm saying within myself, sometimes I just have to lay it aside. And that's, Lord, here I am. Teach me. I'm hungry for you. I'm going to press into you. See, I think sometimes our relationship with the Lord is more of, oh, we want to get all this stuff. And I'm not necessarily, I'm just I'm talking about spiritual stuff or whatever it may be. And we are just trying so hard to get revelation and all this kind of stuff. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be hungry. Right. But my relationship should be based on a friendship with the Lord. Yeah. This is what God is speaking to me, to me for, the, for the New Year. I was sick before New Year's. I don't think it was COVID. I had COVID before. But I didn't feel good for a couple of days. And I was like, Lord, 
why is this kind of stuff lingering and and why is it just why am I experiencing sickness and disease? I thought your promises are like, you know? I thought you promised that I would have health and healing. Sound familiar, Don? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so I was like, Lord, I just put it at your feet. I, I don't know. I have questions. I don't know why. So uh, it was a night or so later. I woke up in the morning. I, I like a dream, but I don't remember the dream, but I remember a phrase that I woke up with. And the phrase was, even as. I was like, even as? What do you mean, even as? <laughs> I mean, it was strong in me. You know, you know when God speaks on the inside. I mean, don't we? Yes, if we're open, we know when he speaks. And it was strong. I mean, you have dreams and they mean nothing. You just ate too much pizza or, or stromboli or something, you know? And, but this was like, even as. And I was like, even as. So I just said, okay, Lord, well, what, what's this supposed to be? And see, this is where I think we need to learn to rest in the Lord believing that he is the one who is going to teach us and give us illumination in our hearts and our minds. Yeah. I could press it and say, oh man, what does this mean? I said, okay, well, I believe you're speaking to me. So I go about my work and so forth, and all of a sudden, a couple of scriptures came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And you can probably guess one of them. Yeah. Third John 2. Mm -hmm. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Yeah. Even as. I said, okay, Lord, I see it. Even as my soul prospers. I said, Lord, apparently my soul's not prospering as it should. I have problems with the even as. We have problems with the even as, don't we? Come on. We have problems with the even as. In other words, that's a responsibility that I have. And this is what I felt the Lord ministered to me. I felt he ministered to me that I need to press into him simply because of who he is rather than always trying to, trying to change myself. Because if I press into him, if I press into him, he will change me without me trying to do it myself. We have too much self-help stuff. So do we really trust in him? I know it gets a little deep. And I, I'm, I'm trying my best to try to, to, to share with you what I feel. But I believe the Spirit of God will minister to each one of you. Then I thought of Brother Hagen. Brother Hagen was a man that uh, knew the Lord in a way that not many people know him. So he had these things happen. He would pray. Stuff would happen. Miracles happen. I mean, we've seen it. We've watched him minister. We see things happening. We, we see it with our own eyes. So we go to his Bible school, Rhema. And we try to, we want to do the same thing. But you know what happens? We try to do it without having the same kind of fellowship and the depth of relationship that he had. And that's where I'm at in my journey. So questions. So he says, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is for us, why then has all these things happened to us? And the children of Israel wondered, were under the bondage of the Midianites at this time. And they weren't, they weren't in good shape. And where, and where are all, listen to this, and where are all, this is what Gideon said, and where are all the miracles which our fathers told us about? <laughs> oh, my heart is for the next generations. Mm -hmm. I have children and grandchildren. Now it's grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And they're growing up. My youngest grandchild just got married. Mm -hmm. oh. And they're growing up. They have another, there's a whole generation. Are they experiencing the same things that we did, the miracles and the signs and wonders that we saw during the charismatic move? Are we talking about them? I confess that I have not talked about them enough with my children and my grandchildren. 
And I am going to change my ways in that. Because there are so many scriptures that say that we should teach our children, our grandchildren. I mean, the children of Israel, they were supposed to tell about how God delivered them from Egypt. How God did all these things and how he took care of them. In the world. They were supposed to tell that for generations to come. Yeah. And not only that, but they, they set monuments yeah. to remind them. You know, the whole monument thing today, there's an evil agenda behind it. Because God wants us to remember the things that he has done. Yes. Amen? Yes. I had to throw that one in there. <laughs> he goes on and says, the Lord has forsaken us. Did you know, if you read this scripture, he doesn't answer his question? I thought that, I just saw that this morning, I thought that was so interesting. He didn't really answer his questions with a direct answer. He just said, Gideon, you're called to do this thing. You are the answer, in a sense, to bring deliverance to the children of Israel. So what do we do? Why do bad, some people say, why do bad things happen to good people? We don't always know. We don't really know why, what's her name? Cheryl died. We don't really know why she went on to be with heaven, on to heaven. But she's in a much better place than we are. And, and I know we always say that when somebody dies. But sometimes, especially when people are younger, we need those people yet. Are you hearing me? We need those people. If a father, we had a, a, a friend of ours, their neighbor, people we know, family, we know the family. Just like he was in his, he was like early 50s, had two young sons, and he died of COVID. Well, I guess God's in control. Don't you say that around me. I'll start preaching. But they need him here. We needed that head usher here. Well, God just needs another rose for up in heaven. Give me a break. Am I being too hard? No. Why do bad things happen to good people? There are a few things that I know are the reasons why we experience bad things. I don't have near all the answers, but I have a few things. Like I said, we don't always know, but we do live in an unredeemed earth, unredeemed world. And because we live in an unredeemed world, there are things happening around us that are not good. <clears throat> Amen? Right. Now, of course, the Bible says we have been given authority and that we can live in victory and so forth. But that doesn't mean all that stuff goes away from around us. Another one is, many times we, we yeah, I say we or I, reap the consequences of our own decisions. That's why bad things happen to good people sometimes. We make decisions not according to the Spirit of God. According to the word of God, if I would always follow the spirit of God, my decisions would always be good. But how many of you know that it's a challenge to even hear what the spirit is saying many times? Come on now. And I believe that the depth of that comes from a deep relationship with the Lord. I believe we can get to the point in our relationship with the Lord that we are so in tune with the spirit of God that we can make a decision just like that. But if I don't spend that time, if I don't press in, I won't be able to get myself to that place. And it's not a works thing, it's a discipline in our lives. That we press in, we're hungry, we're thirsty. And God says he'll fill us. So we reap the consequences of our own decisions many times. The third one I have, our knowledge of God I believe this is sometimes why bad things happen to us. Our knowledge of God is not as deep as we think. Wow. I, I say that to myself. When it says in Hosea chapter, six, uh, chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I know this is not a shouting message, but maybe at the end we'll do some shouting. We'll see. But... Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Did you know that that word knowledge doesn't mean just knowing with your head? 
That word knowledge would be better translated acknowledge. The word acknowledge, the Greek words that you, the Hebrew word that's used there is you have an intimate, deep relationship and knowing of what God is like. Think about that. I have knowledge. You have a lot of knowledge. We have a lot of knowledge concerning the Word of God, don't we? But has it dropped so deep within us that it has changed our lives and the circumstances around us? Acknowledge to abide in Him. Jesus said, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. Or if the branch abides, if the branch is attached to the tree or the vine, you live in me, or he, or he lives in us. We're together. It says when we get born again, the Spirit of God uh, is in union with our spirit. So the Spirit of God and my spirit are one on the inside of me. But I have to learn to listen to Him. I have to learn to recognize Him first of all. And I get so busy with things that I can't even hear him speak because he usually speaks in a still, small voice. Very seldom does he scream at you. We go about our busy ways and so forth, and he doesn't scream at us. He just lets us go. But at the same time, if we listen, he's whispering in here. And we have scripture for all this. I just don't have time to get into all the scriptures. But God is good. So our knowledge of God is not as deep as we think. Again, no judgment. All right, so we have these questions. We don't have all the answers. We have some answers, but we don't have all the answers. And we have a hunger and thirst to receive more from God so that he can teach us, so that our hearts can be illuminated, so that we can know more about the things of God. Amen? Amen. But I want to share a few things that we do know. And we want to dwell on that part. We've, we've kind of dwelled on the negative now. But let's dwell on the things we do know. And there's, I mean, I was thinking about some things. I could, we could stay, stay here for hours talking about the things that we know. Are you hearing me? Number one, we know this. That the word of God is true and faithful. We know that. Amen. Maybe we don't all experience it all the time, but we know that, that the word of God is true and faithful. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says, the promises of God are yes and amen. And he goes on and says there's something about the spirit of God on the inside of us, revealing it to us. Wow. <clears throat> 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I have a lot of scriptures. I want you to take them and meditate on them and this is what it means to go deeper. Take the scriptures and, and read them and let God minister to you through the scriptures. Amen? Second Peter, it says that, we, that through his promises, we receive his divine nature in our lives. Yeah. Divine nature, that's, na that's within us. He, him being on the inside of us. His divine nature on the inside of us. Divine means supernatural. So we know that the word of God is true and faithful. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 105 verse, no, Psalm 119 verse 105. Another thing we know is that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So the things that I shared before, we could get some condemnation out of that. Saying, oh my goodness, I'm terrible and all but there is no condemnation. Why? Because we're in right standing with God. That's right. We are righteous in the eyes of God. That's right. So we know that no matter what happens, we know that we're in right standing with God. <clears throat> Romans 8 verse 1 tells us that. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. To those who walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. Ooh. To those that walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. You see, sometimes when things happen, we think, oh my goodness, maybe I didn't pray enough, maybe I'm not, maybe my faith is not strong enough, and so forth, and we start condemning ourselves. There is no condemnation. 
That doesn't mean we wouldn't press in to try to find some answers, but there is no condemnation. We can't make it happen. Did you ever try to make something happen? I have found the results in healing that I've experienced over the years have come when I say, Lord Jesus, I cannot do this. I can say things. I can confess your word, which is good and necessary, but I cannot make it happen. So I just put myself at your feet. And it's amazing sometimes the things that have happened. Because finally I'm giving up not trying to do it myself. Please don't misunderstand me. I believe sometimes our faith walk can become a self-help thing rather than a real relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. You meditate on that. Another thing we know is this. <laughs> Trying to, I'm starting to get happy now. <laughs> Another thing we know is this, that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. Can you imagine the very presence of God living in you? Wow. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of it. It's God's presence. And Jesus talks about some of the things the Holy Spirit will do for us. He says that he will give us peace. If I'm not experiencing peace, and I'm talking to myself, I'm sure you always have peace, so you're, you're fine. But I'm, I don't always have peace. If when I don't have peace, I'm not following the Holy Spirit. Because where the Holy Spirit, there is peace. Yes. Yes, sir. That's true. So maybe I can use that as a gauge in my life and say, Lord, I need to press in in this area. Press in. What, does, what do you mean, press in? Well, people do it differently. If I tell you that I read my Bible every day and that's how I press in for 10 minutes and you try to do the same thing, it won't work for you. Right. You find what works for you. Yeah. You find, of course, it needs to be centered in the Word of God. We know that. Yeah. But uh, one of the things we do every morning is some people say, well, yeah, you should have devotions every morning. Well, that's good. That's a wonderful thing. But then there's other people that they're trying to do this and it's a bondage to them. Come on now. I know, I'm preaching good, am I not? All right. <laughs> I'm talking about a deeper relationship, a deeper yeah. fellowship, yeah. not just this surface mind thing. Yes, sir. And I don't know, I don't always know how to get there. But if we do the things that God wants us to do and we press in, you'll get there. But it does center around the Word of God. So we, we read a little bit every morning. We don't read a whole chapter always. Sometimes we read a couple of verses. That works for us. I don't know what works for you. Maybe you don't read it all together with your husband or wife. It would be good if you would. But again, I'm not trying to put a bondage on you. But I know it's good for us. We pray together every morning. We confess scriptures every morning. Not long. Probably the most five minutes, right? Maybe a little, maybe not even five. I don't know. We never time it because that's not important. Not how long. What's the depth of it? I know my little granddaughter is seven, uh, almost seven years, six years old. She spends the night sometimes, and sometimes I'm, she likes when I'm still home and, and when she wakes up. So the last time she wanted you to wake her up before I leave. She's my, I'm her papa. Amen. But anyway, so one, so sometimes she's there and we pray. And she said one time, well, you pray long. <laughs> it's really not that long, but you know, for a child. Yeah. <laughs> so you try to have devotions with your family. Maybe you have little children and you think you have to have a half hour devotions. That may be a good discipline for you, but your kids are like, let me out of here. <laughs> And I've, I've heard kids, as they grow up, that's a bad taste in their mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true. Now again, I'm not saying you shouldn't or should do it. Mm -hmm. You have to find what works for you. That's right. Find what ministers. The scripture. Freedom. I'm an able minister of the New Testament. So are you of your own. Yes. I'm an able minister of the New Testament. Not of the letter which kills, but of the spirit which gives life. So if you have young children, are you killing your children with the word? 
Or is there spirit and life there that they glean from it? Uh, wow. Where did that come from? That's good. I don't have small children. I have grandchildren. So the Holy Spirit, how long do you go, Don? We go. You go. Okay. That's good. You said we're not in a hurry. Anybody in a hurry? No, sir. All right. The Holy Spirit is in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The presence of God is in you. And it is that spirit that allows us or has made the way for us to have a relationship, a deep relationship and fellowship with our God, Amen. with the Lord Jesus Christ. Without the Spirit of God, you cannot have that relationship. But God saw fit to put his presence in you. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. Amazing. And we get all uptight about stuff. And we just listen to him. I have a good friend that he puts this into practice in his work every day. And he was a missionary in Haiti for 25 years. And he learned how to listen to the Spirit of God to save his life many times. And so now when he works, sometimes he can't, and he's a handyman. And sometimes remodel and stuff like that. Sometimes he can't figure something out. He just says, well, Lord, show me. And it's amazing the testimonies of that. How, how the Lord shows him the little details. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm trying to get there. But it's a relationship. It's out of relationship. Number four, we know this. Number four. Number three was the Holy Spirit in us. Number one was the word of God is true and faithful. Number two, there is no condemnation. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. His righteousness. Simply because we believe, not because of what we do, is what helps us, what causes us that right standing with God. It's not what I do, it's what I believe. Amen. Noah believed God and was counted to him for righteousness. Abraham. It wasn't the circumcision, that was the result. What'd you say? Number four. I didn't say it yet. The Holy Spirit, you're trying to hurry me now. No. So number three was the Holy Spirit in us. Number two was no condemnation. We're the righteousness. I mean, that alone should cause... If we would get a deep revelation of that, we would probably run around and just be excited because we are in right standing with the Almighty God, the very one that created us. And then the third one should really make us jump. The Holy Spirit is in us. God's very presence the creator, the one who created the heavens and the earth. You know, a lot of people serve different gods, but we serve the God that created the heavens and the earth. That's right. No other God can say that. Right. We serve the true God. So the Holy Spirit, his presence. Number four, are you ready? Yeah. You ready, Tammy? Number four. Okay. We have authority given to us by God. We forget that. Or sometimes it doesn't seem to work. And I believe it doesn't work because of our shallow relationship with him. I'm not judging anybody. So it, it, I'm talking to myself. And you're just listening in. You can apply whatever you want. Whatever the Spirit of God witnesses to you. So we have authority given to us by God. I mean, we have so many scriptures. I do not like the, I do not like the, I do not like the phrase, God is in control. Because right away it takes, it takes away the authority that he has given to us. It is so easy for us to pass it on. We don't understand something and we just, and people do this all the time. They don't understand what's happening and they just say, well, God's in control. Like you said last night, Don said last night, he said, well, he's really making a mess of it if he is. <laughs> and people have said that before. I am very bold about this message, about the authority of the believer, because I believe it's what keeps us from having the victories that God has given to us and provided for us. <clears throat> Again, it's not a works thing. That authority comes out of the relationship with him. A deep, and the deeper, I believe the deeper the relationship, the more we can exercise that authority with power and see results. 
Genesis 1, 26 through 28, very clear. God created man and woman, or he, he created man, and he said, have dominion. Have dominion. Dominion. Ruling and reigning. Have dominion. Amen? Amen. He says, have dominion over my creation. Wow. Not just dominion over certain things. He said, over my creation. And then in Psalm 8, 6, he, he uh, confirms this. I have to read Psalm 8, 6. Or maybe I have it here. Yeah. The NLT says, you gave them charge of everything you made. He's talking about man. You can read the whole chapter. It says now, you gave them, God speaking, God, God gave them charge, speaking about man. Are we mankind? Are you part of that? Are you a whosoever? Huh? Are you a whosoever? Amen. You gave them charge of everything you made putting all things under their authority. How can it be more clear? Why did God choose it that way? I don't know. But when, back when in the Garden of Eden, he gave the authority. He told man to have dominion. Of course, we know the this, uh, this story. We can't get into it this morning. How, how man gave that dominion over to the enemy. But then Jesus died on the cross. To gain back that authority. But the enemy can be here as long as that lease doesn't run out that was given to man. You understand that? Yeah. You rent a property to somebody, you can't just go back in. You're giving them authority over that property. That's right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And if they abuse that property and they mess it up and so forth, you can't just go back in. That's right. Not unless they ask you. <laughs> That's why God wants us to ask him. Someone says, nothing happens on the earth unless we ask God to come and intervene when we pray. That's why I believe every person that's born again is a result of somebody's prayers. Because how can they see the light if the darkness is not taken away? And in Corinthians it says that we pray and we strip darkness from before their eyes. Why? So they can see the glorious light of the gospel. Yes. So somebody has to pray. Yeah, somebody has to ask. Yeah. You're born again serving God because somebody prayed for you. Amen. Somebody asked God to come and intervene in your life. Wow, what power do we have? Authority. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me, Matthew chapter 28. Yes. Now go and make disciples. In other words, now I give this authority to you. Now go and do the things of God. Then we can read Mark 18, uh, 16 and so many other places. Don't even mention, like we have this uh, Monday night thing and we call it a Holy Spirit service. And boy, last Monday night we had a sweet presence of the Holy Ghost. And that's what we're believing for. And we would just have miracles and signs and wonders, laying hands on people, speaking in tongues. There's a lot of places they don't do that anymore. And all that praying in tongues, worshiping in tongues. We had one couple, and we, we uh, uh, the first time they were there, first time they were there, we started singing in the spirit. You know what I mean, singing in the spirit? Yeah. And they said afterward, that's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. I'd never heard it before. A few weeks later, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues. Wow, God is so good. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So, you have made man to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. So that was number four. We know that he has given us authority. So let's dwell on the things we know. And as we dwell on the things we know, he will share other things that we don't know. So we should never be discouraged because we know. We have questions, yes, but we shouldn't allow those questions to take control of our lives because there's too many things we know. Come on now. So let's dwell on those things. Someone says, yeah, but why did they die? I don't know. 
And I don't have to have an answer. If God gives us an answer, then fine. I mean, this is a little on the funny side, but it's very profound. John Osteen. You remember John Osteen. I don't know if any of you would remember John Osteen. But he was a little, you know, he would just flirt things out. Maybe a little bit. You know, maybe I'd work things out too. <laughs> but hey, they were having a big minister's conference. And somebody asked the question. He says, when we believe, when we're praying for somebody, we believe in God for healing and so forth. And, uh, and they die. He said, they ask, what do you do? Of course, everybody's waiting for a spiritual answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, well, we bury them. <laughs> <laughs> and we go on and pray for the next one. Yes, amen. Amen. I thought that's so profound. Yeah, yeah. So simple, but so profound, isn't yeah. it? Number five, this is my last one. Number five. We know that God is good. Yes. Yes. Amen. He is so good. Some people don't know that. He is good. I would say majority of Christians do not know that God is good. But we know that God is good. And we have scripture after scripture after scripture. God is good, Psalm 107, and his mercy endures forever. Because of his mercy, we call him good. Like we say God is good all the time. Well, that's good to say that. But really, the scripture says... God is good for his mercy endures forever. And there's many scriptures in Psalm, a number of scriptures in Psalm that say that God is good. Say it. God is good. John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't you tell me that God is destroying things. Because that makes him a thief. And we need to preach these things. Now, you don't preach it in like somebody, you have a friend, you start talking, they say something, and right away you're in their face about this. No. Right. You do it with grace. Right. Amen? Amen? But when I'm preaching on the pulpit, maybe I can be a little bit more bold. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not just to one individual. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the Spirit of God ministering to you. Amen. But if I still believe that God is not good in certain situations, then I really don't believe that He is good. Right. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> but we know. According to the word of God. And these things are all because of the word of God. They're not just something we thought up. And we're not just something we thought was nice. It's because of the word of God. Because the word of God is our foundation. I think the last time we were here. And we've been preaching this everywhere we go. For the last number of years. We better have the word of God as a foundation. Before the times that are coming. Or the times that are ahead. And how true that is. If the word of God would not have been a foundation in your life, God would not be here. That's right. Are you hearing me? If the word of God was not a foundation in our lives, I would have died in 2015. As I was life support for four or five days. She was as calm as a cucumber. <laughs> she was just as calm as a cucumber. However, cucumber is calm, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> But you know the same. I mean, it was like she was in a bubble. She didn't get that overnight. Hallelujah. All her life, she has been in the Word of God. Relationship. Relationship. I love it. That's right. All her life. Probably more than me. When I was in the hospital for those three and a half weeks, I did not feel like fighting, my faith didn't feel like fighting, and I didn't feel a need to. Why? Because I have relationships. And that's another thing that is so important during these times. Just today, one of my cousins, their daughter-in-law, has been in the hospital how long? Three weeks? And they called her husband in. They're probably in their early 40s or mid-40s. Called her husband in and said, you better come in. She's going to pass from COVID. We got a text at 530 this morning. He went in and she improved. You can't tell me relationship is not important. That's right. That's good. 
There are people dying today of COVID and other things because they don't allow people to come in and see them. There's no relationship. I mean, there's relationship, but there's not the tangible relating, physical. She got better. Just like that, like a miracle. Yes. She was dying. But just like that, like a miracle. I'm sorry, I'm, you can still hear me. You can still hear me. So then, and I'll be bold and say this, then they said, well, you gotta go home now, she's better. And you can't come in. She gets fired up. And we should. I'll take her home with me. We should. I had a sister, her husband, no, 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 my sister's husband, John's sister, John's brother-in-law. Yeah. So it'd be my sister's brother-in-law, yeah. right? He went to the hospital with COVID. He was sick and dying. And they called in the family and said, you better come and see him before he passes. They all came in. They weren't allowed to come in before. They all came in, and he improved. He got better, much better. So then they said, well, no, you can't come in now because he's better. <laughs> you know what happened? He died. You can't tell me that's just a coincidence. Relationships, God made us for relationship. This is part of my message. God made us for relationship. When I was, like I said, when I was in the hospital, people were praying for us all over the world because we had relationship with people all over the world. Churches in Sierra Leone, and I, I know I've shared this testimony here before, but it's fitting again. The churches in Sierra Leone were praying and fasting. They said, we're not letting him die. He came over here and taught us healing. We're not letting him die. Our friends from Singapore, the missionary couple, he called me one day. And he says, we have been interceding and praying for you that you would live and not die. We prayed for Don in this Holy Spirit meeting that we had. We, we prayed for Don and Tammy, and we prayed for the congregation. And we have some people in that meeting, in that group, that they know how to pray. Hallelujah. They know their authority. Amen. Relationship is so important. Develop good relationships with people. Amen. If you have broken relationships, try to mend them in any way you can. Yeah. Let the Spirit of God lead you. Now, it won't always, you know, you won't always be received by other people. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But do everything you can to repair the breach in those relationships. Yeah. Don't wait for them to come to you. Amen. You take the high road. Mm -hmm. Maybe children, parents, neighbors, whatever it may be. We have a neighbor, we, we get to know our neighbors quite, a, uh, we try to, and uh, we moved into another house about a year ago, bought a house. We have all these neighbors up and down the street, and we met many of them. And the one neighbor uh, got to talking, and there was another neighbor, and somehow we got wondering, you know, what, do you ever get together? Says, oh no, said something happened between us all these years ago. How sad. Mm. How sad. All right, I gotta wrap this up. So relationships, so important. So things we know. The word of God, God himself, is true and faithful. Amen. We cannot, listen to this, we cannot interpret the word of God by what we experience. Yeah. That's right. We cannot to interpret the word of God by what we experience and expect to walk in truth. And that's what happens to too many people. The word of God is true and faithful. God is true to his word. His promises will never change. His word will never change. It will never change. You referred to it earlier, the foundation. Everything will be shaken, but the word of God cannot be shaken. And if I have the word of God in me, then I cannot be shaken. That's right. Number two, there is no condemnation. We're the righteousness of God in Christ. 
Number three, the Holy Spirit is in us. He is there to guide us, to give us peace. He will show you things to come. Yes, he will. I can share many testimonies concerning our children of how he showed us things to come. And we were able to head off the enemy from bringing destruction. Number three, we have authority given to us by God. Number four, God is good. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that I may, that I may give you life and give you life more abundantly. It can't be any clearer than that. Yeah. Why do we muddle the waters so much? Right. All right, I'm going to close. And then number six that I had was relationship. So important. Number five, number five was, oh, number five was God is good. Let these scriptures minister to you as we close. I'm just going to read them and let the Spirit of God minister to you. You want to shout, you want to cry, whatever. Proverbs 1.33 says, But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by the fear of harm. Most of these are from the NLT. If you want to write them down and, and you know, then look at them when you get home, that'd be great. Proverbs 1.33, But all who listen to me, this is the word of God speaking. I didn't put my own words in says, but all who listen to me will live in peace, <coughs> untroubled by the fear of harm. Mm. Good untroubled by the fear of COVID. Mm -hmm. Amen. Proverbs 3, 7, and 8. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn from evil. Then, you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. <laughs> oh, we get so impressed with our own wisdom. <laughs> Psalm 4, 8, in peace. I will lie, lie down and sleep. You know that scripture. Yes. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. This is the prayer I do every night. Again, this is me. It works for me. I'm not saying it's going to work for you. <laughs> See, what do I say now? I say it quiet. She doesn't even hear me usually. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what I do. Is I lay myself down to sleep, and I wake up in the morning because he is the one who sustains me. <laughs> Psalm 4, verse 8. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Let them penetrate deep in your heart, for they deep in... See, that's the part we have a problem with. We have a problem with the deep in your heart. Even as. Deep in your heart, even as. It's good stuff, isn't it? Good stuff. I'm, I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of just... Surface stuff. Huh. Got too much of that. Tired of it. That's not where revival is going to come from. <laughs> Pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Let them penetrate deep. Penetrate deep. Penetrate deep into your heart. For they, after they penetrate deep, they will bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. picking out some scriptures here that I've written down for the last couple of years. Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Verse 13 of that same chapter says this. Spouting off about listening, sp spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they all go together. We've seen sometimes these things don't work because we don't heed to some of the principles in the Word of God. We just want the promise part. Mm -hmm. Just want the blessing part. We don't want the part that the hit discipline. that, yeah, the discipline. I thank you. I appreciate that. So, spouting off before listening to this, I mean, this hit me between the eyes when I read <laughs> this. It was back in uh, January of 20. Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. Mm 
because I have a tendency to do that. Uh, Proverbs 18, 13. Again, in the NLT. Uh, verse 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Now, I believe that could be good or bad. Yes. If you talk the word of God, you'll reap the consequences. Mm -hmm. But if you talk all the negative stuff and the death and so on, then you'll reap the consequences. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, I mean, how can it be more plain? Yeah. <laughs> my tongue gives me problems. <laughs> Psalm 20, verse 2. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. Psalm 31, 24. So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. That's a message for you right now. Be strong and courageous. You're coming out of this storm. Be strong and courageous. Don't get discouraged like he said to Joshua. Don't be dismayed. Proverbs 14, verse 30. Am I still okay? Yes. I think the turkey is ready. <laughs> Proverbs 14, verse 30. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Proverbs 14, verse 30. Psalm 35, 27. Great is the Lord who delights in the blessing, in blessing his servant with peace. So he delighted when he sent us the Holy Ghost. That was delightful for him. That he could send his presence on the inside of us. Wow. He's probably up there laughing right now. <laughs> that we're talking about this. Proverbs 24, 14. The godly may trip seven times. This yes. is good. This is really good. Oh, it is. The godly may trip seven times, Hallelujah. but they will get back up again. Right. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Proverbs 13, 3. Those who control their tongues, their tongue, will have a long life. Yes. Opening your mouth will ruin everything. <laughs> That's what it says. I didn't add that. With God's, uh, Psalm 60, verse 12. With God's help, we will do mighty things, for he will triumph. He will trample down our foe. I'll, I'll read that again. With God's help, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little happy now. These scriptures are just, I mean, just let the Spirit of God just put them in you. It says, with God's help, we will, be might, we will do mighty things, for he will trample down our foe. Psalm 62, 1 and 2. I wait quietly before the Lord, for my victory comes from him. Notice that word, quietly. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, when I will, when I will never be shaken. And I will never be shaken. Psalm 66, 5. Come and see what our God has done. What awesome miracles he performs for people. For you. For me. Psalm 66, 12. He went through, we went through fire and flood. We sang this song this morning. But you brought us to a place of great abundance. Amen. You guys, this church, you've been through fire and flood. But not but he's already bringing you to great abundance. Amen. But not only in, in money and so forth, in health, in everything. We need to get on the healthy side of stuff. Oh, Amen? I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. Are you still all doing okay? Yes, sir. All right. Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. Yes. For the Lord is your security. Yes. He will keep your feet from being caught in a trap. These scriptures, I just, when I wrote them down, you know, a year or so ago, I just didn't realize they blessed me this much now. Excuse me. I think that might have been one of the last ones. But. Excuse me. Let me read this to you again. This is the scripture that we're using in our prayers. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. I looked for someone. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. 
I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap, in the wall, so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. But I found no one. Let's make sure. Sin is the gap in the wall. So let's make sure we're not creating a gap in the wall by living a sinful life. Let's bring it down home. Isaiah 7, 9, unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand. I'll end with this one. Psalm 107. Some verses from Psalm 107. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the, fills the hungry with good things. He sent his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Yes. That's what it says. Verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. And then it goes on and says, oh, that people would praise me for the wonderful works I do among men. I mean, that verse actually, uh, uh, Psalm also says that because of our, because of our, uh, doesn't use the word wickedness, because of our transgression, mm -hmm. we have experienced sickness and affliction to the point that we're at the door of death. Mm -hmm. Then it says, and they cry out to me. Then they cried out to me. Yeah. Even in our own mistakes and stuff, we cry out to him. And he says, he said his word and healed them snatching them from the door of death. Verse 42 and 43, the godly will see these things and be glad, while the wicked are struck silent. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. Amen. My challenge is make a new commitment to the Lord. I'm just going to throw this out there. You have to do it yourself. Maybe when you're by yourself or whatever. Make a new commitment to the Lord that you're going to dig deeper. You want more than just surface stuff. Again, I don't know how the Spirit of God does that. But he'll show you if we're serious about doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm believing for a new year of believing. I believe that in this new year, I'm believing that God will do great things in our nation and in our family. Mm 